Hey guys, Mike Toy, Bonsai Boise. So I got this Fukien tea tree uh, bonsai at a big box store. It was on sale, I think, for like 12 bucks or something like that. And so I thought I would walk you through my process of how I convert this into an actual bonsai and put it in real bonsai soil and in a real bonsai pot instead of this monstrosity that it's in here. So follow me and let's get to work. All right, so here it is. So this is a bonsai pot that I'm gonna put it in right here. As far as the tree goes, it's kind of a typical tree that you would find at a, bon a, a big box store when they're selling bonsais. You, usually they don't have a tag, or if they do, it just says bonsai tree. <laughs> Very general information. But a um, couple of characteristics that I notice always is the soil that it's in is usually just some peat moss or some cocoa fiber and two is the way that the branches are structured they put no thought into it i think somebody just goes through and hedge prunes all of them there's probably a hundred or two hundred and they just go through and zip 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 cut them all down to size so as you can see right there there's a good example you've got a branch that's just going straight across so we're going to get rid of that right off the bat and then there's another one straight across so we want to eliminate the ones that we know are not going to fit the, the vision. That clears it up a little. So I kind of just looked at it. We've got options here. I like options. Got this lower branch and then now that we got rid of those first two problem branches, we can see that it got that one out of the way. And then we can see that the, the trunk goes up, has a one branch off to the left, and then it splits into two, which is good. What we don't want is three branches coming out of the same spot, like right here. Ideally, kind of a rule of thumb is you want the trunk to split into two, and then each branch to split into two, and then two into four, etc. You don't want three branches coming out of one place because you'll end up with a big growth bulge right where the three branches are and it'll look weird. What you want is taper. You want it to be thicker at the base and then get thinner and thinner as it goes up. It takes a while to get there, but getting big bulges in a weird spot is going the opposite way. So I'm kind of figuring out the vision for this. And it's gonna be drastic. I'm going to take quite a bit off, but what we're doing is we're kind of resetting the structure here, figuring out which way I want it to go, and getting rid of any branches that don't fit that vision. Second rule of thumb is long, straight branches. We don't like that. So what we typically want to do is take it down to one or two leaf sets as you can see, like that one there has got five or six leaf sets. The longer it grows, the more leaf sets it has. So we want to take it down to about two. And that will give that branch movement. So we get rid of that. And now when a new branch or two new branches grow from that cut spot, it will go in a different direction. So it won't be long and straight. And then you just repeat that process. You let it grow out again to five, six, seven leaf sets. Cut it back to two. Grow it out again, cut it back to two. Over and over and over. And that's how you see these bonsai trees with a lot of good movement. Otherwise known as clip and grow. So it's starting to take some shape now. I will say this is the first Fukian tree that I've ever had. They're a really common bonsai tree, very, from what I understand and what I've seen and heard um, and read, they're very easy to maintain. They like a lot of sunlight. They like a lot of water. They don't like cold. So they're very similar to maybe a ficus benjamina or any kind of ficus, really. I think they may even be part of the ficus family somehow. Like, I'm not sure. 
I gotta say, I do not like this pot at all. Can't wait to get it out of there. First, just doing a little bit of maintenance cleanup here. I try to do these cuts before I repot it because once I pot it into its new pot, it's not gonna be quite as stable and it's gonna be easier to knock around and it's just easier to do the cuts now. You'll also find that I break my own rules all the time, which I'm gonna do later in this exact video. Just getting rid of any little nubs. So it's got decent roots. It's not root bound by any means, but it's got some long healthy roots. Really easy to work with. The soil is very crumbly. It's not soaking wet or anything. So all in all, it's in good shape, but definitely want to get it out of that soil and get it into some bonsai soil. Just my quick two cents on bonsai soil. I, my theory on why these big box stores always have their trees and this kind of stuff is they're shipping them around all over the place. Who knows where they come from? Probably somewhere in Asia. Um, they come over here and they ship from one store to another anywhere in the country. And who knows if the kid at Walmart is going to remember to water it that week. You know, you just never know. So they put in this stuff because it's it, it holds moisture for a very long time. Which you might think is good, but for bonsai trees, not really. Uh, and, and you will notice a significant difference as soon as you repot it. You want to get it into some soil that is well draining, that still has some moisture retention, but is well draining. I'll show you the soil that I use. And if you've seen any of my earlier videos, you, you would know that um, it's really, I use a very simple mix. I've got some videos on how I make it that you can see. Um, it's very cheap, very easy, very accessible. Three main ingredients that I use. I use um, perlite, which you can get anywhere. It's those little white light rocks. I use dry absorb, which you can get at an auto parts store. Same kind of thing you would throw on your garage floor if there's an oil leak, that kind of stuff. So I use that and I use pine bark. Sometimes I get fancy and I'll put volcanic rock in there or pumice. I've never used Akadama. I've heard it's the best stuff you can use, but I don't have any, so I never use it. I use the every man's soil here. <laughs> I think for about $20, I can fill up an entire storage tub. So the root system isn't bad. There's not a ton of roots, but there's a good healthy amount and they flare outward like you want. You want it to kind of flare out in a radial pattern instead of down. Now I didn't do a whole lot of raking out of the roots. You probably should. I'm not worrying too much about that at the moment. This being my first go at this species, I figured I would just let it get established first and then I'll do some of that stuff. So you want to work the soil into the roots. You don't want air, big air pockets in there. So you want to work it all the way into the roots. And this part takes a while. You get like a chopstick or a shish kebab stick, which I'm going to do in a second. And just kind of work it all into the soil so that it's, you know, like I said, no, no air pockets, basically. And also so that it gets established easier and holds it in there. Now you can wire your trees in. I rarely do. Not that you shouldn't. I just rarely do. I usually just put a few rocks in there to kind of hold it in place and keep it stable. No real reason. It's just what I've always done. So I've got a chopstick here and this part takes the longest. So I'll spare you the boredom of that. Then you want to give it a good, thorough watering. And when I say good and thorough, I mean all the way. So what I typically do is I water it until it 
starts draining out of the bottom. And then I keep watering it for a while because you'll notice it's kind of cloudy because that's, you know, dusty bonsai soil. So you want to just rinse it for a while and then I'll give it a little bit of a kind of like hold it in place and just tap it down on the ground a little bit. This is the fertilizer that I'm using. Full disclosure, I am not a fertilizer scientist. I barely know what I'm doing there. That's a 15, 9, 12 mix. If you are unsure, what I've always heard for a rule of thumb is 10, 10, 10. And I just buy this stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot or just wherever. These are some decorative rocks that I use to hold it in place and to make it look, you know, kind of cool. So you see all the materials I'm using are really pretty cheap. I mean, the bonsai tree was maybe $12. There's about a dollar worth of rocks, a dollar worth of soil, and maybe an $8 pot. So, you know, 20 or 25 bucks and you can recreate the same thing. So after I've got it potted up here, I immediately go and break my own rule and go, mm, I see a few more cuts that I need to make. I try to avoid doing this because no matter how careful you are in the new pot, it's kind of unstable and it's really easy to sort of knock it out of place. I think I managed to do it, you know, safely this time, but Many times I've done this. I've gone and made cuts after the fact and bump it the wrong way. And then it's all out of place and I got to pull it out and redo it. And then the soil's wet. It doesn't work into the roots as easy. It's a big pain. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. Lastly, I'll, I'll point out just, you can see the movement now in the tree. I hope it's easier to see where I know there's a lot of foliage and it was maybe hard to watch cutting all that off, but you can kind of see where it's going now. So the trunk goes up. Got the left branch off, going off at the bottom, and then goes up and off to the right, and then back up again, and then off to the right again. So it's going to have some good movement now. It's all those leaves are going to grow back, and it's it's going to look great. But um, but now it's got some interesting characteristics and some movement. So, anyways, that's it really. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if so, and you can watch some of my previous videos and see some updates on this. Have a good rest of your day.